When is the last time we seen rap beef like this? We got J. Cole, Kendrick, Future, Drake, Rick Ross, Metro Boomin, The Weeknd, Chris Brown, Quavo, all these different guys going at it. In this video, I'll be compiling all of the different beefs together so that you guys can get caught up if you're not familiar with what's transpired thus far, starting with the big three. Hey Splashers, welcome to a special edition of Splash Talk, where today we're gonna dive into Drake, Kendrick and Cole, are they the big three in the rap game? Who's the best rapper? I think it's, let's dive into this video and we'll tell you who I think number one is and she might have some opinions as well. This is Kiki Giovanni, my Hello. sister, and we're gonna discuss how Drake, Future, Kendrick, all those guys intertwine and J. Cole. So let's see where this discussion takes us. Drake began his career on a hit TV show called Degrassi and from there, his mixtape So Far Gone brought him into the spotlight with the hit single, Best I Ever Had. Skyrocketing his career, labels were jumping at the chance to sign Drake, and ultimately, Lil Wayne and Young Mummy, not Young Mummy, but Lil Wayne and Young Money got the deal done. The Take Care album won Drake his first Grammy and led him to immense success. He has the most number one hit records of the three artists. He is also versatile to switch between styles of music and is the artist who has the best pop appeal. J. Cole's music career started taking form when he dropped the mixtape to Come Up and he signed with Jay-Z's Rock Nation. His album Born Center pushed Cole into the conversation of one of the greatest artists and rappers of the modern era. His style of rap is very introspective, vivid storytelling, and he delivers bars that waste no words. Kendrick Lamar burst onto the scene with his debut album Section 80, which J. Cole produced his debut single, High Power. Dr. Dre signed him to Aftermath Interscope, where he released his Good Kid Mad City album, displaying his authenticity, narrative-driven life experiences, and witty bar structure. Where did this beef start from? Do you know? I don't know. For me, it seems to have come out of left field because it seems like everybody was cool. Drake and Future were really cool at one time. They had an album together. They've gone on tour. Kendrick, they just gave you your props on first-person shooter mode and said you were part of the big three. Now, while why all of a sudden are you saying, F the big three, it's just big me? Like, where is this coming from? Well... Him and J. Cole, I'm not sure why he targeted Cole because Cole and him actually started off working together because Cole was one of the first producers that he worked with when he got his discovery. So before he signed to Dr. Dre and started getting into music, J. Cole actually did multiple records for him. Mm -hmm. And as we just said, High Power was his lead single off his Section 80 CD or album. And from there they went on to work on multiple songs and they were supposed to do a project together which ended up getting shelved. So that one's more of a mystery for me as to why this whole beef happened and what caused him to switch over to not liking J. Cole. But I would have to assume it's because of the affiliation with Drake. Gotta be. So going from there, let's get into how Drake and Kendrick got started. Kendrick Lamar, when he first was coming up, Drake actually took him on tour. So Drake put him on his tour, brought him out, shouted him out as his brother, you know, referenced all his music, talked about how great of an artist he was, all of those good things. But a couple, maybe even a year or two years down the line, Kendrick kind of felt like Drake was kind of slighting him and, you know, treating him like he was a little brother, even though Kendrick, you know, had the good music. He was delivering bars and doing things similar to how Drake was moving. But as they went further along from like 2013 on, they kind of had this sneak dissing going on in records. So there's multiple records where you could hear lines that could be referenced towards Kendrick. You could hear lines referenced towards Drake. Kendrick Lamar's control verse was the verse that popped off everything out in the public to where he came at J. Cole, he came at Big Sean, he came at Drake. He said Andre 3000. He came and grabbed everyone that he respected as an artist and told them, like, I'm better than you. So from that time on, you kind of just see how the beef can transpire, what different, you know, sides there are. And I feel like Kendrick's kind of not rocked with Drake for at least 10 years now. Interesting. But even just, I'm not that familiar with Kendrick as an artist, so let's just preface that before I get into my actual opinions of everybody. Mm -hmm. I've never listened to a single album. I only know the popular songs, and I just hear how he has these people who think he's this great lyricist. Okay, cool. But 
what I want to say is you just said he will come out and then put all of these people's names in a song. From a marketing standpoint, that looks like, let me just go live my life, chill over here in the cut, and then when I need to get back in, let me name drop all of you guys. Like, it doesn't seem like it's authentic beef. It's, these are the people who are hot. If I mention them in my song, now my name gets brought up in conversation with them, and then I can drop my own stuff that I've been sitting on for who knows how long. Uh, you might have a little bit of a point there, but at the same time, he has never relented against Drake. He's hit Drake every time. Drake's gotten thrown into all his bars, and we'll show you guys a couple clips as well to where people reference the bars that Kendrick has thrown at Drake and then the bars that people could see that Drake was throwing at him. So it's been a constant back and forth, so it's not been Kendrick just magically said, hey, Drake, now I'm coming for you. No, he's like, I've already been getting at you. I've been letting you know it's hot around here. We're, we're kind of moving a certain way. And first person shooter has some digs in there. It did, but J. Cole said we're the big three. So, you so don't okay, think you can say. Talk, if you're putting a verse on my song, I'm Drake and J. Cole, you're putting a verse on my song. I'm not going to listen to your verse and be like, oh, I don't agree that we're the big three because I don't mess with Kendrick. Like, wouldn't that be relayed before releasing a record? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Perfect example, uh, Young Buck did a song back in the day called Stomp, and he put T.I. on there. Mm -hmm. T.I. went and did his verse, not knowing that Ludacris was getting on the song, and Ludacris went on there and straight dissed T.I., and the song came out like that. But that's so, such a different time, and there's way more money and people on the line at this point in time. It's no way this could slip through the cracks with two big I don't think it like slipped, that. but what I think is that when you rock with somebody in music, you still want to let them express themselves and not tell them how to do a song with you unless you're just like, I really rock with this person. No, we're not putting that out. Well, a reference with that was the Travis Scott um, Kanye thing. He got upset because Drake got on a Travis Scott record and said F Adidas. And at that time, you know, Travis and Kanye have the Kylie and the whole Kardashian <laughs> thing. And he's like, why would you let Drake on this song and say F Adidas? It's Nike around here. And Travis basically stood his ground like, I'm not on either side. So. But see, that's that's where every person has their choice as to what they want to do with their music, their talent, their things like that. And then, you know, whatever repercussions come are what comes to you. So mm -hmm. if you care about this certain alliance with a certain person, especially Ye, you know he's going to be a, a person that's not going to be very forgiving. He's going to look at you like, all right, you said that, I'm not rocking with you no more. Right. You got to kind of pick your battles with who it is that you're dealing with. And certain artists, you know, they're not going to be like J. Cole probably is not going to be as mad about you, you know, dissing a brand because right. he's still getting paid. But, you know, yay, live, sleep, that breathe was thing, was Adidas, Adidas at the time yeah. until now he's not rocking with it, you yes. know. But that that's where it kind of comes down to perspective and using your judgment because everybody knows they can do different things and figure but out how they want to do it. in that situation, I will say for Travis, like I love somebody who can be like, you know what, you have an issue with that person, but I don't. Right. So I don't have to take on your feelings about that person. So good, uh, good job. Good yeah, job. and I'm curious too because there's also um, this Twitter poster that people made to where they showed the different sides of who may be on whose team compared mm -hmm. to... Drake and Future. So from the poster, let's see what we had here. Looks like they have Metro Boomin, Kendrick Lamar, Rick Ross, Playboy Cardi, Travis Scott, The Weeknd, ASAP Rocky, Pusha T, Kanye, Mike Dean, and Young Thug all on Future's side. And then on Drake's side, they have J. Cole, Yachty, Lil Yachty, 21 Savage, Sexy Red, Meek Mill, Nicki Minaj, Wayne, and then SZA. Out of those artists, who do you guys think really would choose sides? And also, who do you think would have the strongest team if they had to go song for song, if they had to put on a performance, or if they all decided to actually spit verses or do diss tracks against each other? What would you guys think? And what's your opinion on that? First of all, just looking at this poster... I only recognize three people from Future Side. Just on first glance. <laughs> so let's just put that out there. Wait a minute. It was only three people that I recognized. <laughs> the rest, I'm like, wait, oh, oh, is that? So let's start with that. 
I feel like Drake has the more solid lineup. He has the better songs. They're just bigger, more overall developed artists on that side. They're the mainstream guys. Yeah. But you have monster hit makers on the other side like Kanye, Playboy Cardi. I don't Travis understand Scott. some of these artists. These on guys that are side. cult following. Yeah, I'm just I'm not into that. That's three cult, thing. cult following artists. Those three alone are gonna dominate streams. By themselves. Insane. And we don't even have to listen to their records. It's going to go viral, platinum, triple platinum. They might so even go Yachty whatever's the highest. So is not in that same conversation as like no, he's, no, he's not as strong as them. Yachty, Yachty's got a following though. Yachty does have you know a good background of people that like him. But Playboy Cardi, I don't ever hear his music anywhere that I go. I've never heard it. I went to Rolling Loud. <laughs> this man's show was packed to the freaking front. And all the kids were jumping up and down. And he stood in the dark the whole time and screamed. I didn't wow. see him yeah, perform the a lyric. Yeah, that's the image I get. It's like this very dark image. That's so, it. I've dark just... stage, hooded figure, blacked out. You got like maybe one light in the background and that man has a cold follow. Hey, well, it works for him. Um, but just because it's the lineup, I don't see all these people chiming in or picking sides. I want to say from Drake's side. Obviously, Drake's in it. J. Cole got thrown in it with a stray bullet. I don't feel like he deserves to be Well, the Cole theme, actually but... <laughs> dissed as well. Cole has um, some, some disses in And then in I, even Nikki. Like, I don't feel like Nikki will jump in it. For she me. may not jump in it, but you they're know? saying that she she liked both guys and she might go to Future is what some people are saying is that Future might get her alliance and she may end up being like, hey... I'm not going to diss anybody, but I might be like, this is the homie over here. Yeah, or okay, this the homie so over here. Can we figure out what exactly is Is it label is loyalty or is it going to be who she rocks with the heaviest? Who sees? I don't know. But at the end of the day, all of these people want to get paid. Their motivation is to make money and develop their artistry. So it has to come down to what makes sense. Is clicking up with Future a better look for my career than clicking up with Drake and his side? People are gonna have to, you know, really figure that out. I mean, it depends you what your what your your end goal is. Are you wanting to be the biggest artist ever, or are you wanting to just be consistently? Great? But we've kind of even seen that with Kanye. I don't. Once again, I'm not totally familiar with everything, but when he goes on these rants, it seems very selfish. Like it's for him. So if you side with him, and then all of a sudden he's blackballed not gonna come back and help you like you just ruined your own self by aligning with him when he jumped off the cliff so it's like let, let's not that's jump not off the cliff. true because playboy cardi travis scott and ty dollar sign have all been big up by kanye kanye has pushed is this each ty dollar sign thing new because i've never seen those two they've done songs in the past but now they really tapped in and aligned so they must be the same kind of energy person so they're doing a lot more stuff together but where is Pusha T? Travis. Where's oh, Pusha's Pusha is always gonna be there. Pusha, thing. Pusha doesn't want to be like that main main guy. And Pusha's forty something years old now. What does that matter? So is Kanye. Drake the difference is, is Kanye, like, these built, are all Kanye built Kanye built the cult Future's following. Pushing forty. Kanye built the cult following before he even got to that age. That's the thing. When he was doing the college dropout, he was a backpack rapper. He already built it. Pusha now trying to build a cult following is gonna be hard. Travis has already said that he gives a lot of his success to Kanye because Kanye like showed him how to be this person that's bigger than just an artist that's a festival, you know, uh, carrier that can jump out into the crowd and everybody just go wild and bonkers. It's just pandemonium, pandemonium whenever Travis comes out and he learned a lot of how to do that from Kanye. So yeah, Kanye might go a different direction. He might not always talk about the right things or say things in the right way, but he's genuine to the people that he rocks with. Now, Which is sometimes, fair. like you know, I said, I don't, I don't know why he keeps having issues with Drake, but uh, yeah, you know, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I'm a diehard Drake fan, so just to see this back and forth, oh, we're cool, okay, we're shaking hands, and then the next moment, you guys are not cool again. And just from listening to Drake songs, it seems like Kanye flip flopping or not being genuine from the start when he says, okay, let's squash our beef. It's like a look. Mm -hmm. And Drake even said in a song, he was like, it's all premeditated and all calculated, and that's what it seems like. I mean, hey, everybody, like I said, everybody has a difference of opinions and how it rolls, but also Kanye probably has the least to gain from calling out Drake. He doesn't need the publicity anymore. He already does enough things that bring publicity with his wife, with the way that he talks about whatever politics, the way that he deals with his brand deals, the way that he 
talks about his baby mother and her family. He already knows how to stay relevant in the limelight. This man did a Super Bowl commercial, paid millions of dollars, and shot it on the iPhone and didn't even edit it crazy. He just put the video up, talked on the video, and he made 70 or $80 million. But how much did he spend? None, no, except for, for the commercial, $5 million. Okay. So everything else was profit. He spent nothing on paying anybody yeah, to do the video. Yeah, he's very smart when it comes to that. But it's a genius. You said, would he need to gain anything from mentioning Drake? Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, Kanye is still a musician. He's still a rapper. He so he's it's the an ego one thing. He still wants to compete within that space. Yes. It's, it's not, it's not yes. what he would it, gain because be his, public, his publicity there. is there. It's, it's, it's a lot. I mean... When that whole push a T situation went down, I honestly feel like Drake not coming back with another diss track was literally just to save face for a lot of people. He knows some things that he should not know. He's done some things that we don't need to know about. So that's the only reason why he conceded on that is because it was about to get really ugly. And he keeps alluding to that in more songs. So all I gotta I, say, I you what, see these yeah. fingers get pointed in the in the pictures, you know. So I want to say, you know that. <laughs> Houston situation was like, look, 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 that's going to just open up a Pandora's box for a lot of people, and it's going to go beyond music, so let's just keep it here and play it safe. That's what I think. So how do you feel about Drake's response where he initially brushed off Kendrick and was just like, yeah, I don't know, you know, he seems like he's trying to prove something or just come out and show that he has issues. And then later, Drake, you know, goes in on the language, 5 a.m. in Toronto. He has these different digs that could be, you know, perceived as going at Kendrick. And that's the thing. Like, I'm, I i can't speak on the whole Kendrick thing. Like I said, I've not really got into you his music. You know all your Drake lyrics. Go back and listen to some Drake, Drake lyrics and hear what he's suddenly know. talking about somebody. <laughs> I would have gone at Kendrick. If he did, okay. All is fair in war. I get Love it. Love and war. Yes, I get it. So if that did happen, sure. But I feel like Drake and J. Cole is not a new thing. So when Kendrick said in his newest diss, like, oh, these dudes are clicking up, what's wrong with that? Is that not he, a smart move to involve other people? I don't think he like, had the issue with them being together, working on music together, doing all those things. But the song is called First Person Shooter. So they're saying we're direct hitting you with a bullet. And then they're... they're putting lyrics in there that sound like it could be geared towards Kendrick. So how would you take that? Like, oh, now we want to work together. We already said we're the big three, but now we want to hit you as the other big in this song that we're finally doing and knowing that it's going to go number one because Drake is a number one and it gave Cole his first number one. So let's speak on that. We got to give Drake our flowers. Drake is a humble king, okay? Uh, Everybody tries to say, humble. oh, he's clicking up with people. We can't call well, him humble. Well, it benefits the people that he's clicking up with. He's not clicking up with anybody for clout. He is the clout giver. So let's just put that out there. Yeah. He is. I, I <laughs> he agree. He will pull from I below agree. and pull you up with him. So He does both, but I also do believe he is opportunistic with certain songs that he hears. Like if he hears this hot new song like Four Bats, he did the remix, which, you know, I didn't feel like that was his best remixing work that I've heard. But he does try to big up people like, um, what's homeboy's name that did uh, JB Block Boy, which, you know, he tried yeah. to help him, gave him a single, and then Buddy couldn't carry it after that. And he's that. very consistent he's, you with know, it. He did this back in the Fetty Wap days. He right. heard he's My Way from Fetty Wap. Yeah, My Way from Fetty Wap. He hopped on that. Shot it to the moon. He didn't Migos, have to do Versace, that. you yes, know, it's a bunch of... On. Uh, he's he put good. the City Girls on with that Kiki uh, Do You Love Me record. Yeah. Like, Sexy Red. Now he's giving her all this clout. So, I agree. Drake, like, Drake tries to help people. He does things to, you know, better up people. And then he also takes advantage of opportunities when it presents himself. Mm -hmm. I'm not mad at him. It's so an if artist. So, he is dissing you, it's, it's very slick. And he does it in just a very classy way. So, it's hard to be mad at that. Yeah. So, if we look at her loss... <laughs> It's a lot of bars in there that he was like, hey, it's going to take time for you to get these bars, but the people that these bars are for, they're going to know what this yes, is. You know right so away. we'll break down like how he does that slickness. He's, he's a witty disser. He's going to sneak diss you, but he's going to put it in a way to where you know that he's talking about you in the verse. More M's. Everybody's saying that's about future. Whether or not it is, we'll have to look at some of the lyrics. And but. I went back and I listened to it because 
that was not one of my favorite songs from that album. Mm -hmm. um, so I did go back and listen to it. I'm like, okay. But then there was just so much quietness after that. So if somebody's coming at you, that was your friend. So if yeah. I'm future, like, wouldn't you respond to that right away? Why is it this long, drawn out thing to where now well, we're just hearing about this beef? If you kind of see it, both of them kind of kept their beef quiet. Neither one of them came out and like said, we're not rocking with each other. It just gradually just kind of separated and we didn't even know. Nobody knew they weren't rocking together. That's why it's such a big surprise now to see that he allowed so, Kendrick to come on there with a flamethrower. But more M's was produced by Metro Boomin. And that's before him and Metro fell out. So supposedly what happened is Drake smashed Metro Boomin's girl and then wrote in the song, oh, like you're tripping over this girl. Like, I hit her, so what? Like, you mm. know what I mean? And then from there... Wait, he smashed Metro's girl Metro and said Bowman's that on the girl. Metro beat? No, 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 no. I don't think it was on the song. Okay, okay, okay. Um, a but song. he he put it in a verse basically saying, like, I smashed the chick. It's like, it is what it is, basically. And then hmm. also with Future, supposedly they got into it over this chick named Diana that works at Booby Trap. And you'll see in the video or, like, in the pictures, I'll show you guys in the picture where Drake is hugging putting his arm around her, and he bought all the girls that he rocks with in booby trap Chanel bags. So then they all got these Chanel bags. And on Future's newest album with Metro Boomin, he actually just did a song called Princess Diana. So there's a lot of similarities that are popping out in this to make this kind of pop off the way it's popping off so far. And then the third thing that a lot of people are speculating, we don't know for sure, is that Future was mad about the 21 Savage collaboration album. I could see that. And the reason why they're saying that he was mad is because he felt like him and Drake already had their collaboration that's, you know, big, doing his numbers, all that thing. And then once, you know, him and Future kind of had this riff, now he wants to try and boost up another collaboration to kind of overshadow their collaboration. Well, that collaboration was not it. They have some, the they have some stuff on there. A, Digital Dash. Jumpman, um, Jumpman, yes. They had, they had multiple. Uh, Dance, I got big like, rings. Like big what? Rings. Uh, you just named it four just, or five that all was hitting. What it you mean? Just, it, it just didn't do what it needed to do. Point it being did. is, it was not like the they Jay both was able to Kanye perform like that everywhere they wanted to. Nobody yeah. can match that. I'm, I put the, we're shooting for the greatness. production so there was ridiculous because you had yeah. multiple producers that were out the box. You had Hip Boy, you had Yay, you had freaking. Um, who else on there? I'm sure Mike Dean had something to do with it, but the production team on Ye's stuff is different. Ye goes and grabs the Mozart producers of everything to jump in and do some stuff. True. Every chance he gets. So with that project, you know it's going to be fire, and you have two artists that are very deliberate in the way they deliver their bars, their messages, mm -hmm. the structure, everything, and try to think out of the box. So that's, that's a different type of album. But going back to the 21 Savage one, they were saying that Future felt like Drake just threw him on there because it's still mostly a Drake album. Drake has solo songs on there. And, you know, Savage did about 40% of the album. And we're talking about Her Loss. Yes, Her Loss. He did about 40% of the album and then Drake took him on tour, boosting all this stuff up. And behind the scenes, things are shaky between the two of them. So now we're kind of seeing how this whole situation transpired yeah i feel like we still don't have enough information um the one thing i will say is that future was very deliberate with this drop okay i'm putting <laughs> kendrick on the song metro boomin and then they also said that the weekend is in the background i don't know if it's of that song but he's in the background of another song on the album so they're like the weekend is showing yup I'm not messing with Drake either. Everybody is saying that that's exactly what that Also, showing. they said Rick Ross unfollowed him. Mm -hmm. Nav unfollowed him. And then also, I don't know which basket. Oh, I think John Morant. They said John Morant unfollowed him First as of well. First who is watching for this? How do y'all know? It's <laughs> like, you're weird. <laughs> because people go and go check people's follows once Drake stuff pops unfollowed. off. Yeah. And what's crazy too is so after Drake got unfollowed, he ended up making a post by, um, got unfollowed by Nav. He made a post using Nav's song lyrics talking about um, something taking a trip in Turks and Caicos. So he's like, mm. in Turks. And he used that and had the post of him I like walking that. across and the I stage. I was like, this is not That's a in big reference bar, to Nav. I didn't know what it was. He used okay. Nav's bar against him. Like, all right, you want to switch up? Hey, I got sure. something for you. That's King Petty. Drake's definitely the king of Petty. 
What do you guys think? Do you feel like one side is more right than the other? Do you feel like what what can be the real cause and root of Future and Drake going from being like almost brothers, doing songs together consistently, collaborating on more than, I, they probably got like 25 records together, to just all of a sudden just have this like break that no one saw coming? Yeah, I mean, people were very confused when her loss dropped. They're like, there's no Future song on there? <laughs> yeah, it, it I was, was very expecting surprising it. Because he always has a song with Future and vice versa. So when that didn't happen, it seemed a little weird. But right. I don't know. He didn't think it was going to go to this extreme. Yeah, and that's the thing that's just wild to me is that, you know, I, I'm curious to see if Future is going to actually get into diss records because so far the ones that have proven they'll actually diss is Drake and Kendrick. And then J. Cole, we know he can do it, and he's mentioned names. Like, he had a little bit with Young Boy NBA. He did a little bit of that. And, you know, he's he's kind of, like, subtly jabbed people, but his bars are amazing when it comes to jabbing. So from there, I'll be curious to see how many are going to actually get in and do a whole diss track about the other person. Future, I haven't really known him to do that, so I'd be curious to see if he gets out and just releases a diss track at Drake or Cole or whoever it is that he really has beef with. So we'll we'll kind of have to be on the the hot seat waiting to see who comes first. Who who do you guys think is going to be the first to respond to all of the ac- accusations and the beefs? Is it going to be Kendrick coming back out? Is it going to be Drake, J Cole, or will Future surprise us and drop a diss track first? I'd be the first to say I don't think it's going to be Drake or J Cole. I just don't see it. They're on tour. They're making money every night. Like, why? Well, Cole has an album coming. He does. He does. So this definitely helps his album. But dropping a diss song, I don't know. I don't know. And I feel like Kendrick might pull a Beyonce and drop an album overnight and just bust everybody in the head. I feel like that. I do. I feel like this is definitely the lead up into whatever Kendrick's going to drop. Oh, and the surprise, too, is Eminem has an album coming, too. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if Eminem will get in on uh, Kendrick's side or if he's going to stay neutral in this because that would be crazy. Yeah, let's stay neutral. (laughs) (laughs) Let's stay neutral. We don't need to add anybody else. It would have to be Eminem and Lil Wayne going at it. And then it would have to be Kendrick and Drake going and at it. And if this all is steaming or stemming from a, a female, then we're really doing. Oh too yeah, much I, at this I, point. I really hope it's not that crazy that they're like, going like this. Man, but be a tour or we some got type two of, of the thought guys going going bar for bar because Drake and Future both like to knock down bad ones, so they constantly uh, attend the strip club. Yeah. Go to dinner with chicks. Um, fly females out. Drake Pay said for he stuff. should get an office in the back of Booby Trap because he's there so often. That's so. what I'm saying. So it's like, I mean, that's their whole life. So it's more than just like, oh, it's a chick. It's the style of life they live. So who knows? But J. Cole's involvement is more nuanced. We don't really know how he kind of got tied in so much because he's been a collaborator with both artists, Kendrick and Drake, and he's also been a competitor against both of them. His track, False Prophets, was speculated to have references about both rappers. Though, majority of the song was geared towards Kanye. So, we don't know, but like I said, Cole is very smart and calculated as well. So, each one of these artists know how to hide the the real meaning of their songs, the words they put in there. And we're back. So, they're saying this chick named Diana that works at Booby Trap was the reason why Future and OVO, Free Band Gang, broke up. And she looks like all the other ones that they've ever dated or been around. Mm-hmm. Looks very similar. You guys let us know what you think about this chick when I show you the picture. But I can only imagine that that can't be the only reason why it, these it guys have fell be. out. And it better not be. <laughs> Especially if neither one is claiming this girl. Why? Somebody better have a kid <laughs> like by her then. something. Also, so on uh, Drake's Fear of Heights, he said this in reference to Future, supposedly. He might take you on trips and he might have some hits, but baby, not more than me. He might be at the trap and order some ones, but ain't throwing more than me. Mm. Mm-hmm. And the trap is Booby trap, trap, their favorite spot to go in Miami. <laughs> yeah, Drake said he needs an office as often as he's in Booby Trap. I don't get that obsession of throwing money 
I get it. Strippers are entertaining. Okay, but that can't to just... an extent. You're right, exactly. But like, in once in a blue, just... but I don't know about every weekend or multiple times a year, all the time. Definitely Whatever. entertaining. I like it, but I don't know if I'd be in there every day. Yeah, and supposedly um, the wave check posted the booby trap shorty's got Drake and Future going at it, and then the girl who's one of the strippers, her name is Latina K. Creamer, and she said, Drake and Future are beefing over Amber, so I'm assuming that's Diana's stripper name, from The Trap. You know how many of us in there eat D.I.? <laughs> Be for real, she has a man <laughs> as well. So, basically saying that she's a thought and has a man, and saying, like, why would y'all beef over beefing this female? Over that. <laughs> yeah. And then I saw a tweet where Metro Boomin recently said that it's not over a girl. You guys are making stuff up. So okay. hopefully it's deeper than that. It sounds like it's deeper than rap. <laughs> um, and then also Drake's More M's verse. They're also saying that verse was about future. So in the first half of the verse, Drake says, what happened to that NIG claiming OVO we traded him? And if you know, Future was FBG OVO. He also had an owl chain. Mm. And he would wear the owl sweaters. Okay, so he got traded. Also, another one in the Drake and Savage, uh, more M's part. F it, let me kick it basic. Ends ain't got love for the boys so they fake it. Crack a couple jokes to some bees on some snake stuff. That could be anybody. And then future reference, he said, just a sad hoe running through the crew type ish. Bunch of rich hoes got confused type ish. Saying that they go back and forth. Yep. Yeah. They're confused who's what. Because, oh, this one's paying the day. Oh, he flying us in. This one's taking us over here. So they kind of like the loyalties yeah. just bounce oh, all over well. the place. And then he says, she F me. Ran her mouth because I'm the boss type ish. Okay. Well, and then he also said, but if I send a verse to they ass, then they'll take it. Shoot a video arm around me like we aces. Or pop out at my shows, jump around with me on stages. Definitely jumping and around. He referenced <laughs> I've seen Future jump around. has the song Wait For You with Drake and Tim's. Future has I'm On One with Drake and Just Drake. And then he's also on stage with Drake. And those are some of Future's biggest songs with Drake features. So, hmm. Hmm. Then the verse ends like this. Probably why these hoes love to shower me with praises. Might have effed the rapper, girl, but you ain't effed Drake yet. Uh. And then he also <laughs> said, in the song, that's what would Pluto do? And anybody that knows what Future's name is, he goes by Pluto. And this whole time, we thought he was paying homage to Future, and now sounds like he was actually coming at his neck. So Future might have been the only one that knew that he was getting dissed at the time, and everybody else thought he was Which getting flowers. Which is weird, because I was like, why is Future not on this album? And then I saw that song, I was like, oh, Future's on it, but he's not. Nope, and it said, what would Pluto do? He'd F the hoe, so I did it. Oh, so he's basically saying, this is what you would have done to me, so I did it to you. Okay. Uh, tip for a tap. Hmm. And then on uh, Futures We Don't Trust You, he said, sneak this and I don't understand, dog. Pillow talking, acting like a fed, dog. I don't need another fake friend, dog. Can't be about a hoe because we sharing, dog. In your feelings in, why you playing, dog? So he's saying oh. that Drake's in his feelings. <laughs> Kiki, do you love me? Well, he is or more Diana, sensitive guy, do you love sure. me? Well. But, yeah. I mean, shouldn't they know Who's Ray J in this situation? Who hit it first? That's what I want to know. <laughs> did Drake hit first or did Future hit first? And should there be a loyalty to either one? I'm, when you meet somebody in that profession. So, here's where I stand on that. If you know she's for the squad or for any nice looking man with some money, then I don't care. But, if it's somebody that's, you know, different line of work, they're not on this same type of tip, 
then I'm going to feel some type of way, especially if you know and you're my boy and I've been talking to you about the situation. And now all of a sudden you're knocking down the same girl as me. Yeah, nah, we ain't going for that. <laughs> who do you think is the best artist and who's the best rapper in this situation? Out of the three, big three, who would you choose for those, those uh, categories? Best artist, Drake, overall. He can touch any genre. I also think he raps well, too. Um, but I like okay. J. Cole's bars and his rap style. So he would be best rapper, Drake best artist. Okay. So I would agree with the best artist being Drake as well because... He's able to do all kinds of genres, and he's very good at making sure that his songs chart. He knows what to get on the chart. It's not always my absolute favorite, but if I go on my Spotify, we'll do Got this. Let's see how songs. many Drake songs I have. And I'm not even like Drake down, but let's see. I have 72 Drake songs. So that lets you know it's that I like the songs that this man makes. 72 Drake songs, okay, guys? That's crazy. Now, as far as the best rapper to me, I got to go Kendrick because I feel like Kendrick does it with the most passion. His lyrics hit hard. He's very relatable. He's a storyteller, and he just delivers bars that make you think. And his he's very conscientious with his rap. He does things political, un, unfair situations. He does it about, you know, poverty, different things like that. He does it about war, struggles, all of that good stuff. And J. Cole is very, very close to him when it comes to being a lyricist and a rapper. But I give Cole, I mean, Kendrick that slight edge because I just feel like I relate more to how he moves and I really feel like a, a spiritual type connection when he delivers his bars and his tracks. But man, does Cole have some good stuff. The off season... That was the best work for me from Cole because he delivered with the best beats. He had excellent lyrics and he rapped with aggression. That was the one area where I always felt like he lacked was his aggression and his beats selection. So once he updated that, I was like, all right, okay, this is the Cole I've been asking for for years. And then, like I said, Drake is, Drake is just a good overall artist. Now, if it comes to performing... I got to go Kendrick first because his live show made me feel something. His show is just great. You're going to enjoy it from front to back. It's a whole movement. And then I would have to go J. Cole, especially when he did the off-season tour, brought out the flaming backboard, went up. J. Cole went in. Those two, performance-wise, excellent. They sound exactly like the records. Nothing's changed. Drake, very good performer as well, rapping. When it comes to his singing... <laughs> I got a little discrepancy there because that thing is kind of flat, but I do enjoy his show overall. I just wish he would get some vocal lessons to be able to strengthen his singing or increase the auto tune, one or the other. <laughs> I've only seen Drake perform, but I heard J. Cole's really good. I've heard really good things about him, so I would want to check him out. Okay. So how do you feel that this beef has fueled the competition in the industry and what do you think is going to happen from here? Like how will this affect the rap and music industry? Yeah. So I think that it's going to obviously bring views to them. So for everybody's projects that are coming out or are already out, increased traffic. So this is a great time for somebody to drop something new, a product, anything like this is prime time for that. But I kind of feel like this is a ploy. Like, is it real? Why did it take so long for it to show up? Their album, with all these diss references, dropped like a year, two years ago. Future's just now responding. It's just now coming to light. Like, I don't know. Timing of it's weird. Yeah. Um, I'll say that. But I don't think that it's going to just make everybody start dissing each other and all these sides going against each other. I don't think that's the smart thing to do. Just let these guys handle it and then everybody go back to normal. <laughs> well, with the situation overall, I feel like battling is a big part of hip-hop and rap in its core. So having artists that are the top artists in their game going at it, as long as it stays on wax, they stay you know, with tracks, I, I think it's going to be great for competition. It's going to make other people do better on their records. It's going to possibly put more hit songs on the radio from these guys as well. And you may see some collaborations that are sneaky disses but not yeah. really disses so people are gonna 
jump on tracks with their favorite guys that they want to side up with. So overall, I see it being healthy for hip hop and these guys are going to show out. Hopefully, we get responses soon from Drake or Cole. I don't know. I don't think he's going to respond. Or if he does, it's going to be another slick bar that we have to catch on to. It's not going to be anything direct, I don't think. J. Cole might, since he has that album that we know is coming out soon. He might go back in the studio like, okay. Let's Let see. Address this. I, I'm ready. I'm ready for the summer. I was already talking about how summer. I was like, man, I didn't know who was gonna carry summer, but now I'm almost guaranteeing Drake's gonna come with some record for oh, summer. Yeah. J Cole's delivering the album, so he should possibly have a summer banger on there. And then Kendrick, we know he's gonna come through with some type of heat seeker. So everybody should be able to come through with some good records for all of the fans. What do you guys think? Who was the best artist of the three? Why do you believe that? Tell us in the comments. I would love to see the discourse, you know, possibly agree with you guys, possibly disagree with you guys, and have some fun with it, see who's actually the artist that everybody likes the most. Drag. <laughs> so with J. Cole and Kendrick's beef, that one is more of a deeper level type of beef because it seems like they never really had a big falling out. Overall, they're both extremely talented. They both delivered great projects, but it just so happened that the timelines of their projects kind of lined up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So when J. Cole would drop a project in a year, Kendrick had a project in a year. If Kendrick dropped a project in that year, Cole, vice versa. Overall, they both would get their kudos, their credits, or things like that, but there were multiple years where Cole dropped the album and Kendrick won the Grammy for it, so then he kind of, you know, possibly slighted, felt, felt slighted, slighted as yeah. far as Kendrick winning the, the Grammys over and over each time that he's delivering a classic project as well. And then also, you know, it was just Different accolades just weren't lining up for him the way that he thought they would. And there was also uh, one of the records that they were on together where Cole said that he's the king, the god. You know, he's had these different references as far as how his rap skills are. But he only gave Kendrick a hook. He didn't actually give Kendrick a verse in that. So people felt like, okay, maybe that was some type of slight in there. And then also in 2018 on Young Jeezy's project, he had both of them on the on the song. And he didn't tell each one of them that they were on the song. So oh, wow. one person was on and then the next person jumped on. And Kendrick happened to be the first artist on there. So he was on some more melodic, singing type stuff. And then J. Cole jumps on and he's on a more aggressive, more like passionate rapping style. So was it even a good song? Did it match? I, You know, I got to go back and listen because <laughs> yeah, I haven't listened like, in a while. But yeah, Aww. overall... It seems like theirs is more a competition type of thing versus having a direct beef over some action that happened mm -hmm. to where, you know, Cole feels like he's the better artist. And well, Kendrick's Drake. Like, I'm like, what's the direct Drake and Kendrick beef? Or is it the same thing? Just kind of who's better than the other? No, so with like theirs, that. like Kendrick went on tour with Drake when he first was getting started. Like Drake brought him out, brought him on tour, started helping him, you know, get on or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then from there, Drake kind of like thought he was bigger than Kendrick and he was acting different towards him in the next couple years. Mm. So then that's when Kendrick kind of felt like, all right, you want to, you know, be this big guy yeah. versus like, you know, we were rocking as boys. So potentially that's how that switched up. And then from there, they just kept, you know, sneak dissing each other. And I feel like Kendrick just never forgave him for whatever it was he was mad about. So then each time, you know, Drake throw something back, he'd throw something back, and they just kept building it up till now we're in 2024 with this. But okay. overall, <laughs> I enjoy the music from all three artists. I'm happy to see that they're all coming out with music and that they're delivering the bars that we want to hear, they're delivering the songs that we want, things like that. So this should be a fun year. And as you can see from the videos, that J. Cole actually responded to Kendrick, and he put out his own diss track. Check it out here. J. Cole responded to Kendrick. I gotta take my jacket off for this one. J. Cole dropped a surprise album, Might Delete Later, before he releases his next project to fall off. J. Cole dedicates song number 12 titled Seven Minute Drill to respond to Kendrick Lamar's verse on the song Like That on Future and Metro Boomin's album that dropped on March 22nd. What do you guys think of this response? J. Cole rapped rap. This wasn't just rap. This is the off-season Cole. He finally dove into that bag 
that we know that he has because Cole does pop out and do these things occasionally, but the offseason was his most consistent, aggressive flow to show everybody that he is the most talented artist possibly ever. Who agrees or disagrees with that? I might be on the fence, but we know that this man could deliver, and now we're seeing it. Here are the J. Cole bars that stood out to me on this album, might delete later. How I look having henchmen. If shots get to popping, I'm the one doing the clinching. So he's saying that if anything were to pop off rap wise, he's not sending anybody else to do his beat. So I'm assuming that he's talking about his Dreamville team because a lot of people were saying that Jid, Boz, you know, uh, different artists that are on his label possibly might jump into the mix. But he's saying that he'll be the first one to shoot if he needs to do the rap bars, which he's showing now doing this response to Kendrick's verse and letting him know that he's prepared to go toe to toe with him on the bars. He's still doing shows but fell off like The Simpsons. That one's kind of a stretch there because Kendrick just had the highest grossing headlining tour by a rap artist ever. His shows brought in $110,886,000. Yes, $110,886,000. And that's for 73 shows. So, we can't really say that Kendrick fell off because highest grossing rap artist ever, that doesn't really add up to him falling off. But okay, the bar was pretty dope because you know he references to Simpsons and how long that show has been running. And of course, having a show that's been running for that long of time, you're going to have some shows that aren't the best, but overall, the body of work is going to be crazy because The Simpsons is still one of the longest standing shows ever. Then J. Cole goes on to say that your first ish was classic, your last ish was tragic, your second ish put to sleep, but they gassed it. Your third ish was massive and that was your prime. I was trailing right behind and I just now hit mine. Now in front of the line with the comfortable lead, how ironic soon as I get to the top, he wants something with me. That right there was probably the biggest direct hit that he could have delivered to Kendrick because he referenced his whole body of work. This by far was the hardest hitting lines of this song. He addresses all of Kendrick's body of work and calls out which ones that he feels were good and the others that were not up to par. The two albums in question that he calls not that great of albums was To Pimp a Butterfly, which is the second album released by Kendrick, and the latest project is Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Do you feel that these albums missed the mark? I don't. I loved both of those albums and J. Cole, you know, he's right for getting at him in different aspects and trying to come at him for his music, doing what he does, but To Pimp a Butterfly is absolutely a classic. There's no way you can look at that record and say, oh, this is not a classic album from Kendrick. People are going to sleep on this album. That's just not true. Do you feel these albums missed the mark or is J. Cole just hating? He averaged in one hard verse every 30 months or something. So here, he's talking about how long it takes Kendrick to release albums, singles, different things like that, taking a hiatus. He did have a five-year gap from 2017 to 2022, but to be fair, Kendrick and J. Cole both have the same amount of studio albums that have released, six albums total in the last 13 years. They both dropped in 2011, all the way up until now, they have the same amount of catalog. So. It makes sense based on the time, but he's kind of being a little bit hypercritical in this situation because they both like to do that hiatus type thing and take their time with their music, which, you know, as fans, we want more from these guys because we love rap. We love how they're both great artists, but at the same time, you know, they leave more for the, the palette, which I think is part of their, their way that they keep this aura around them as great artists. If he wasn't dissing, then we wouldn't be discussing him. This bar is hard because J. Cole feels that Kendrick would be irrelevant if he wasn't dissing him and Drake. Do you agree with this statement? My thoughts on this is Kendrick is relevant anytime he jumps on a verse. Doesn't matter what year, doesn't matter what time, date, any of those types of things. Same thing with J. Cole, he could jump on the verse out the blue and it's gonna be relevant to us because we're seeing something different from these artists that we don't always get. Consistency with their music. Andre 3000 was notorious for this. He'll disappear for a while, but then he comes back, he delivers a hard song. He delivers a verse that's beautiful, things like that. So the artistry is always gonna hit harder if the artist stays relevant, but also is able to take time off. If the artist doesn't take the time off, 
sometimes you get oversaturated. Like, how do we feel about Drake? Do we feel like he's been giving us too much music? Do we feel like he needs time off? Or do you like the amount of music that he delivers on a regular basis? and his consistency is what you enjoy the most. Let me know in the comments if you feel like that's the route to go for an artist, or do you like an artist that takes their time, delivers classic projects, and sits back and thinks about it for a while. I'm Nino with this thing. This that New Jack City meme. Yeah, I'm aiming at G Money crying tears before I bust at him. This reference has a lot of ways that it ties together with Kendrick and J. Cole. Because in the movie New Jack City, you could see that G Money was Nino's right hand man for a while until he cut a side deal and Nino ends up killing him. J. Cole is saying that he is killing K Dot in rap and he was kind of like his right hand man when he was coming up because when K Dot first got started on Section 80, J. Cole actually produced a few records for him. So they were working together pretty closely and they almost dropped a project together. They have the songs recorded and ready to go but for whatever reason, they never ended up dropping that project. This, you know, makes sense how J. Cole could take this as Kendrick coming at him in a different way and him feeling like he's the bigger artist being the Nino Brown in the situation and Cole being the G Money. Four albums in 12 years, I can divide. So he's telling them that his pattern of releasing music is very sporadic. He doesn't deliver albums that often, which like I said earlier, J. Cole also has that same inconsistency with his music. I'll give him credit, he's been starting to show up a lot more in the past few years, and now Kendrick seems like he's ready to get in his bag as well, but they both have six albums total since 2011. So the amount of activity that the artists put into the music that they're doing, they're right on par with each other. He has been releasing music at a slightly faster pace than Kendrick in recent years, but it's not that much of a difference to notice. I'm excited seeing the direction hip hop and rap is heading towards. We haven't seen a beef this good since Nas and Jay-Z. Real rap is back and 2024 is looking like a great year for music. Okay guys, maybe the J. Cole beef is over now. He decided he no longer wants to be involved with Kendrick and Drake. And now it's just gonna be down to the big two. It's no longer the big three. Have you heard? J. Cole just apologized to Kendrick. So the beef is now over. Here's exactly what he had to say at his Dreamville Festival. Me, right? So I'm so proud of that project, except for one part. It's one part of that shit that make me feel like, man, that's the lamest shit I ever did in my fucking life, right? And I know this is not what a lot of people want to hear. I know I can hear my niggas up there right now like, nah, no, I don't do that. But I got to keep it 100 with y'all, right? I damn near had a relapse, right? Because y'all heard some shit that happened two, two, three weeks ago, however long it was. Y'all heard that bazooka that was dropped on the motherfucking game, right? So all of this time of me moving on my own accord, for the first time I was tested. Why am I tested? Because I got the world... And I got my niggas like, what you going to do, Cole? <laughs> my niggas like, bit boy, I must have had a thousand missed calls. Oh, my fucking God. Text flooded. I couldn't even answer my shit. Nigga, it's wartime. Right? <laughs> niggas want to see blood. And, and I was conflicted because, one, I know my heart. You know what I mean? And, like, I know how I feel about my peers, these two niggas that I've just been blessed to even stand beside in this game, let alone chase, chase their greatness, right? So I felt conflicted because I'm like, bro, I know I don't really feel no way, but the world want to see blood. I don't know if y'all can feel that, but the world want to see blood. So I say all of that to say, in my spirit of trying to like get this music out, I ain't going to lie to y'all. I moved in a way that was that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like I try to like jab my nigga back and I try to keep it friendly. But at the end of the day, when I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. That shit make me feel, that shit disrupts my fucking peace. So what I want to say right here tonight is in the midst of me doing that and, and in that shit, trying to find a little angle and downplay this, this nigga's fucking uh, catalog and his greatness. I want to say right now tonight, how many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest motherfuckers to ever touch a fucking microphone? Dreamville, y'all love Kendrick Lamar, correct? As do I. 
As a man, I understand why J. Cole ended the beef, but as a rap fan, I'm really, really disappointed because I was hoping to hear some more tracks on Wax Only. I didn't want them to take it to any violence for it to go any further than just rap. But having two of the greatest go at it was going to be amazing for us because we'd have got a lot of records that we wanted. We'd have had a lot of stuff going on for the summertime. And just, you know, the energy in rap has always been about battling, always been about competition, always been about who can do the best with lyrics, who picks the best beats, all of that good stuff. This was going to be our Nas and Jay-Z moment. And now it's over just like that. How do you guys feel about this? Because me... As I'm saying, I'm a little disappointed because I wanted to feel more passion in it. But we could already kind of tell that J. Cole's heart wasn't in it like that because that was the biggest thing, is the rapping with aggression. And for me, the only album that I ever heard him rap with that aggression and that like hunger in his soul was the off season. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Well, we won't be arguing Kendrick and Cole anymore. On to Drake. Drake has to respond to Kendrick now because both of them cannot bow out and just say, oh, I'm good, no beef, unless they're gonna all just make some music together. So if they give us good music, then I'm all right with it either way. But if they don't deliver an album together, a tour together, the big three something, we gotta get something here. As fans of rap, as fans of hip hop, as fans of good music, they owe us something, even though they don't really owe us. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if you feel like this beef, this battle, this rap, icons that we have here should have went a few rounds before they ended it or if you're satisfied the way it ended now. Kendrick's going to drop another one. I, I have a strong feeling that Kendrick is not done. Whether or not he's going to still take aim at J. Cole, that is to be seen. But I know Kendrick has more bullets in the clip. He's ready to unleash. He got off one round, and he didn't even go as hard as he would go. And that was what people were kind of giving him ish about, is that he didn't go as hard as he could. But then once he finally got a response, Cole didn't go as hard as he could. But from there, should... Should he not respond or should he respond to what was already shot at him? This is going to show us how much Kendrick really rocks with J. Cole because we can tell that J. Cole rocks with Kendrick because he even says that the two of them were greatness and that he was still chasing after them. So it's a lot of respect being shown by J. Cole. And like I said, I, I'm all for it. I love that he loves Kendrick. I love that he loves Drake. But at the same time, I wanted to see the competitive side of Jermaine because I felt like he had it in there to be able to give them something. Show us that he can, you know, go rounds in the in the ring. Box. Do something. Don't just dance around it. You hit him with a shot. You can't just say, no, I didn't shoot you. Sorry. All right, I'm off my soapbox. Seems like we got a full civil war of beef because we got so many guys in the mix now. We got Future. We got Metro Boomin. We got Finesse Two Times. NBA Youngboy. We got Kendrick. J. Cole. Chris Brown. Quavo. So many different guys beefing right now. This is going to get interesting. Check it out. What is the hip-hop and R&B culture coming to nowadays? Chris Brown's dissing Quavo. Okay, now fucking my old bitches ain't gonna make a sequel. Sipping in 1942 because I don't do no Quavo. Freak bitch. She like Casamigos, not the Migos. J. Cole, Kendrick, all these guys going at it, and Drake. And then I'm hearing that Finesse two times and NBA Youngboy are going that as well. What are we doing? This is going to be crazy because we're just getting into the spring and summertime is coming full steam and we got all these beefs going on. Chris Brown just released his deluxe version of the 1111 album last night and he was talking about how Quavo went behind his back dating his exes and how she doesn't rock with Quavo and that she doesn't drink anything or she drinks Casamigos she don't rock with the Migos but now Quavo already responded with a song called Tinder you did a bitch wrong and not a bitch gone she posts with a thug yeah with a thug caught a bitch phone she won't come home don't beat her up don't beat her up it must be the drugs must be the drugs need to cross out your plug yeah yeah and the whole hook is coming straight at Chris Brown he's talking about don't beat her up must be the drugs and he's just ripping them for being on coke and all these different allegations that people have always insinuated about Chris. This is crazy to me that we got all these beefs coming out right now when everybody's in the mix getting their music going together. Like, is there something in the water that I don't know about? Because I would have never expected Chris Brown and Quavo to go at it. Or J. Cole and Kendrick. Drake and Kendrick, I, I could expect that. And then finesse two times in Young Boy NBA. Or young, it's yeah, young boy NBA, right? NBA young boy. There you go, NBA young boy. But 
I'm hearing that they're beefing over the baby mama finesse and all these different things. So it's like, how is this all just transpiring all of a sudden? Because we haven't had good beefs in a long time. I'm really hoping that finesse and NBA Youngboy don't really, really get into it because I feel like they'll both take it to the streets. The other beefs, is it's going to stay on the record. So this is going to be a good time for us as music fans because there's so much music that's supposed to be delivered. And Drake might even be popping out tonight when the Metro booming in future, we still don't mess with you, is coming out. And with the Metro booming in future, we still don't trust you album coming out tonight. They're saying that Drake might be dropping his diss to Kendrick Lamar and overshadow that album. Do you guys think that it will overshadow that album? I don't know. But this is crazy. I'm excited for where music is headed. This is going to be a good, like, this is like heavyweights. Almost like if we had prime Muhammad Ali going against a prime Mike Tyson. Who the heck wins the fight? We don't know. Drake just responded. Here's his response to Kendrick. See what he had to say. I said, listen, as a hip-hop historian who loves hip-hop, I would love for you to respond. Of course, we want to hear it. Drake dropped a diss track to Kendrick. And now we see what rap beef is really going to transpire from this. Because this now addresses Kendrick head on. He talks about how Kendrick is stuck in the top dog deal, not getting all his publishing. Saying that Scissor's better than him, saying that 21 Savage is better than him, and just basically telling him he's not even worth being in the big three. Drake said that he'd rather repeat himself twice in the big three than acknowledge that Kendrick's actually one of the big three. And he also told The Weeknd, whose real name is Abel, that he's letting his man Cash spend up his money. And this is like tricking on your homeboy. So he's saying that basically he's tricking on men and not women by paying for his boys to do stuff. So it's like, Drake Drake coming at everybody on this. And then he also said that he was gonna cuff your girl like he's Ricky, which references Rick Ross being a CO in his past life before he became a rapper. And that Drake, the first number one, he put it in his hand. Without Drake, he wouldn't have had no number one. And he said the hit maker that everybody depends on. Right there, he just hit Kendrick hard because he said Kendrick can't be big stepping with a size seven men's on, which he's referencing the height and size of his feet because Kendrick's only 5'5", five five, and I'm sure his shoe size is not bigger than maybe a nine at best. But Kendrick's a big dog, though, so that's it's still a hard one, even though Kendrick's height and stature is similar to that Allen Iverson trophy that they just gave him, calling it a statue, which we all know statues should be bigger than that, but... I'm hearing that Philly actually does everybody's statues like that. So it's it's kind of wild. But um, yeah, I had to jump on here early today, you know, record this because I'm hearing these bars. And so, you know, we had to let it run in the background so everybody could see what these guys were talking about. And right there where he said, big difference between Mike then and Mike now, he was referencing the line where Kendrick called himself Prince and calling Drake Mike Jackson, saying that basically he was dead and that Prince was the better artist i might have been mike at that time but now i'm a evolved version of mike so i'm even better than i was when we first started all these things and right there he was saying that future wiggy 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 that's part of his song he said you're spinning like you effing but drake's doing better than you and he's buying chanel so that's referencing the stripper that they were kind of beefing over because drake did buy the strippers at booby trap Chanel bags, which made it, you know, a relevant discussion there for everybody to see. There you go right there. He's going to take the latest girl and cuff her like he's Ricky. And then he used that as like his um, his bridge. And right there, he even referenced J. Cole saying that that like that verse that Kendrick did was good. He said, I don't care what Cole's talking about. It wasn't good enough. He's saying Kendrick can't match his numbers, can't match his money, and that there's no way he's catching up. And then he emphasizes that even though he put this diss track out, this is not all he knows about Kendrick. So there's more to come if Kendrick responds, which I have a strong feeling Kendrick is going to respond. He's not going to let Drake just take this and just, you know, sit back on his hands like, all right, you know what? He got me. No, he's he's got something cooking up for this as well. He even disses him about getting on the song with Maroon 5, talking about he had to write witty bars just to be able to, you know, have a verse for Maroon 5. And then also dealing with the Swifties, which is Taylor Swift. And we know he did a song with Taylor Swift that was pretty good. So Drake's over here calling them out for having to click up with pop stars and, you know, different groups to be able to showcase what he was doing or whatnot. But 
How do you guys feel about Drake's response? Do you feel like Drake came out swinging? Do you feel like Drake could have done better? Do you like the beat choice? Do you like the style of his flow? All of that good stuff because he's on here cooking for me. I do wish he was a little bit more aggressive in his tone, but I also have a little bit of insight. There might be another diss track that's already wired up. Heard a little snippet of it last night, but obviously, you know, for reasons like this, I, I didn't get the full access to the song. Um, but yeah, no, nah, I think, I think hip hop and rap are in a great place right now because we're getting beefs on wax. So it's going to be a lot of entertainment with all these different people that are coming out and putting music together. And it might seem like everybody's jumping Drake, but you got to also understand that Drake has came at every one of these artists throughout his time, except for maybe Rick Ross. Everybody else has caught strays on his records throughout the time that he's been recording. And we're starting to notice it more and more now because you can dig in and go see what he actually was saying about different people and find out where the different references came from because everybody's doing their research now. Twitter is the best resource because everybody on there has an opinion. Everybody's translating the lines that he's saying, different records that he put together and figuring out who was who and what was the reference in whatever song. So some of the, the tweets that I saved right now, I'm gonna read some of these to you guys so you can see what responses they had in regards to this whole situation. So Drake said, Maroon 5 need a verse, you better make it witty. Then we need a verse for the Swifties. Top say you drop, you better drop and give me 50. So he's basically saying he's at Top Dog, who is the CEO of Top Dog Entertainment, becking call to record a verse for whoever he asked him to, like the Maroon 5 and Taylor Swift, which I don't know on that because I feel like Kendrick would want to do that because those are artists that were big and he was able to gas and show people his skills and talent that may necessarily not listen to his music because some Taylor Swift fans may not be Kendrick Lamar fans. But now, because he did that record, he has that fan base. Also doing the Maroon 5 record, he has that fan base. So, I mean, people have things to say at all times. You can't ever avoid the critics and the people that want to talk about different things that you could and couldn't do. But I mean, it's, it's a smart bar by Drake though. And then Drake even said, this ain't everything I know. Don't wake a demon up. Drop it, give me 50, all you F NIGs teaming up. I can say the word, but I don't want to say it in the video. <laughs> he threw a shot directed at Kai Sinat, but it really wasn't at Kai Sinat. It was still at Kendrick trying to say that he was begging Kai Sinat or someone's begging Kai Sinat to do something with them. I don't know which one, but I can't imagine Kendrick was the one that was begging Kai Sinat to do something because Kendrick doesn't care about being popular. So we'll see who who he's referencing and why. This was another one to where he directly fired back to that like that diss that Kendrick did because he said, it's me twice in the big three, I had to leave you out. So he's telling them right then and there, I don't respect your musicality, I don't expect you as, respect you as an artist, I'm gonna take the spot twice, so it's just me, Cole, that's it. Nobody else is basically what he was saying. But yeah, The weekend. <laughs> I have to laugh at this because The Weeknd definitely made sure that his presence was felt on the future project with Metro. On both albums, he has a song on the first one. Second album, he has a couple different songs that he's actually featured on, and he did a verse on those. So Drake had to come at him. He said, claim the six and boys ain't even come from it. He said, when you boys got rich, you had to run from it. Cash blowing Abel bread. Cash is his man, one of his boys, blowing his bread out here tricking. He said, it's shit we do for the women, he doing for the guys. <laughs> that, that's comedy that he really would sit here and tell this man that he does stuff for men, not for women. And then this was another direct line that he did for Kendra. He said, Pip Squeak, pipe down. You ain't no big three. SZA got you wiped down. Travis got you wiped down. Savage got you wiped down. Like your label, boy, you in a scope right now. How the F you big stepping with a size seven men's on? Kendrick, I hope you're ready to respond within the next 24 to 48 hours. We need it. I know it's coming. Come on, K-Dot. Let me hear what you got, because Drake definitely put at least, I want to say, 10 to 15 lines towards your direction. And he hit Ricky Ross. And he hit Future. And he told Metro right there. He said, hey, sit your hole behind down and make drums. Like, you're not even in the mix with this. Like, just go ahead and sit out the whole game. Ah, gotta love it. Gotta love it. And then he even told him, this one was directed at Kendrick again. He said, what's a prince to a king? He's a son. He's a son, boy. Like, saying that he's the king. 
and Kendrick is the prince. Kendrick referenced himself to Prince in the disc. So he's saying that he's above Kendrick and is his father in this music thing. I don't know, I don't know. I'm hearing a lot of fire, guys. It's 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 hitting kind of hard. Drake, Drake was really ready for this one. Oh, and then the, this part was for future. He said, I can never be nobody's number one fan. Your first number one had to put it in your hands. You boys can't get booked outside of America for none. I'm the hit maker y'all depending on. So basically saying that if he would have never linked with Future, Future would never be out of here. Future would never would have had these big hits. Cause Future was great at the trap music, always had the street stuff that everybody liked, but he didn't have a number one hit until him and Drake linked up. And now that they did, he's able to, you know, move around with number one records, do more in the industry and things like that. I mean, Drake's kind of telling the truth right there, so that's, I don't really hear anything that he's lying about. Oh, and then here was the, the full line that he directed at Rick Ross. He said, I might take your latest girl and cuff her like Ricky. Can't believe he's jumping in this it turning 50. Every song that he made on the chart, he got from Drizzy. Worry about whatever going on with you and... Uh, basically just told Ross as well that he wouldn't have no hit records without Drake, which I don't know. All the records that Drake did with, with Rick Ross, I do have to say that they were some great records, especially when he would do the Maybach music or anything else that he hit him with. Those melodic style beats, Drake definitely knew how to deliver on those, so it made it real crazy. I, I love it though, music is back. I feel like we're gonna have a strong spring and summer, a lot of activities, a lot of people going through you know, their, their catalogs, diving in their bag, trying to make stuff happen and come at the next person as far as who is gonna be the best artist that can be out there. So I think us as fans, we're in a great position prime spot to enjoy some real good music what do you guys think let me know in the comments below if you feel like drake is winning now did he crush kendrick how do you think this will end how many rounds do you guys think they'll go before they finally call it quits and who's gonna have the biggest record of the summer right now i have to say kendrick was up one then drake came back and tied it up drake's this might be slightly above kendrick's because it's more bars and more direct but now that Kendrick actually gets to respond directly to that verse, I, I think there's going to be some flames thrown. Thanks, Splashers, for watching. Catch you guys on the next one. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your feedback on this beef, other beefs. Chris Brown and Quavo are going at it as well, which is crazy. And you got NBA Youngboy going at it with Finesse two times. And then, you know, you got the original beef of the future, the Drake, the J. Coles. Dr J. Cole decided to bow out because... I believe he spoke to both parties because they said that him and him and Kendrick actually spoke the day that that like that record dropped and you know they kind of had an understanding and then also I'm pretty sure he heard from Drake that this was coming so once he got that information he was basically like look I would have stayed in if it was going to be friendly competition and going back and forth cool 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 but knowing that these two really don't like each other and they haven't liked each other for the last decade he was like let me get out the way you two go ahead and do your thing, and then we'll just, you know, see where it goes from there. But, hey, it's going to get good, and I'm, I'm happy to be able to see where they take this. What? Guys, can you believe it that Rick Ross responded to Drake already? Check out what he did. Rick Ross responded to Drake's... You jab. Crack smoke is the exhaust from my pen and pad. Ghost writers, they get the floss, what you could have had. This, as soon as the diss was put out, he already fired back with the diss track towards him. And it's crazy because he calls out Drake for a lot of things and the beat that he goes over is just sick. He's got hard hitting drums. He's got the violin playing in the background. It's just like a, a funeral song. It sounds like something straight out of Godfather. I can't believe that Ross was the first one to respond back to Drake and he was this dang quick. Hip hop is going crazy with the responses, with the battles, with the raps, with the everything. It's just I just don't even know what to expect now. And even more so, Mac Main was over here getting that punch from TDE about Drake dropping his diss, and they're going back and forth exchanging, you know, words on Twitter. X, this, this is crazy, because I'm like, bro, we've never had this much conflict that seems like it's popped off all at one time for music, rap beefs, all of that good stuff. And it's it's cool. Like, I, hey, I'm all for it as long as everybody just keeps it on the tracks and do what they need to do. 
Send your shots how you send them. Show who's the best man for the job. But did any of you guys expect that Rick Ross is going to jump out the back and be the first one to drop a bomb back on Drake as soon as he dropped? Man, let me, let me just help you guys understand what this man said. Let's unpack the things that Rick Ross had to say. He told Drake that he had a nose surgery because he didn't like his dad's black nose, which we believe that Drake did have nose surgery a while back. And... You know, Drake is Jewish and black, so they're saying that, you know, he may not have wanted to look so black and ethnic, so he went ahead and changed his nose. Man. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's, it's up. Another fact that Rick Ross threw in the air was that Drake had the six-pack surgery, which we all saw when he was at his most fit, you know, weight and size, and he looked like he was in the gym quite a bit. But everybody speculated that the man had the six-pack surgery. And now Ross is saying that the six-pack disappeared. So now that's why we're seeing Drake covering himself up, wearing different outfits at his shows and things like that. Do you guys think that's why this is happening? <laughs> I don't know, but I, I have to say that Ross, Ross was hitting with some zingers on this. He also told Drake that his flow is copy and paste. There's really no uniqueness to it. It's no difference in style, how he does his flow and things like that. Do you believe that it was pretty much straightforward flow? He doesn't um, have a great switch up? If you think that he switches up his bars very well or his sound, his tone, things like that, name some of the songs in the comments that you really like how Drake does his thing, you know, how he flows and spits on his, on his tracks. Another allegation that's uh, comical as well is that Ross is calling him white boy throughout this song. So he says Drake is that white boy who tries to hang around black people at the park. And I mean, we all know people that are like that that try to fit into a group that they're not necessarily a part of, but you know, they have a lot of friends that are in that particular group. So they try to, you know, hang out and some people do it for the right reasons and things like that, and other people just want to do it to be down with the group or the team and things like that. So here, he's trying to say that Drake's a poser, and he really leans more towards the white side than actually being around black people and hanging in his, you know, his roots and his elements of black. He also calls him out for having ghost writers and that they're, you know, writing these bars for him and that he's having to break off money to them for putting the track together and spitting the bars and all of that craziness. Ross also addresses the fact that he was getting at Kendrick about splitting his profits to TDE, Top Dog, for 50% of his um, you know, royalties and all of his different money that comes in. And Ross is saying that he's paying Birdman and Wayne and that he has to keep paying Wayne money consistently and also ties in Jay Prince, who he's saying that Jay Prince is getting money from him as well. So if you look at that, that's three different hands that Drake has in his pot before he actually gets to cash his checks. So who's getting taken for more money? Is it Kendrick or is it Drake? Because both of them have people that potentially could be, you know, getting a big chunk of their royalties, their money and things like that. But, you know, as we know, Kendrick seems like he has one person at the top that was getting money. And who knows if Top Dog's still getting money because Kendrick is now independent. And Drake has three. He's got Birdman, Wayne, and Jay Prince, presumably. Well, Ross thinks so. He also tells Drake, we can take it how you want to take it. And when you see me, to check me. So he's letting him know he's with all smoke. And if you have beef with him... He's willing to address it in whatever kind of way, shape, or form that you want to take it to. If you want to go on bars, if you want to have it go to the streets, if you want to catch the fade, whatever. Rick Ross is saying that he's with everything that Drake would deliver to him. And that, you know, Rick Ross got the Haitians and the Zoes. And then Drake has, you know, the, the African guys out there in Toronto that, you know, is all the, the Haitians and stuff too. So it's, man, I just hope they don't go into this whole big battle of cliques and crews and who's going to do what and what gangs is with what. Keep it on wax. Do your thing. Spit these bars, and I really hope that everybody's doing this to just up the competitiveness and that they're really planning on working on music together or just even all going to drop music, which would be the best way to hit us as fans over the head by having us think that they really have this beef. Oh, and the best part I liked about Ross's diss is that he actually addressed the reasons why he unfollowed Drake on Instagram and what made him even want to diss back. So he was pissed that 
Drake sent French Montana a cease and desist letter about some music and sent the police to his house or wherever he was at at the time to, you know, stop his album from coming out and the project being put together the way he was doing it. So, I mean, that's logical reasons. And then also, you know, he's a good friend with Future and then other people in the industry that he has friendships with. So I'm sure he has more insight into what happened, why he feels some type of way about what got delivered. But man... Um, who was to expect that Rick Ross is going to be the first one to answer and that he came off this vicious? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I don't, I don't know where it's going next, but it's, it's up and it's stuck now. I don't see this coming down for a while. We might have a hot summer full of disses, bars, tracks, great music, all of these good things. So I hope you guys are ready and stay tuned because I'm going to try and hit it as often as these things come down the pipeline. And like I said, I had to jump in quick give you guys this message because Rick Ross already dropped as soon as I was done with Drake. Thanks for watching my video splashers. I hope to catch you on the next one. Stay tuned. Check out any other videos that you haven't already. I do movie reviews, other pop culture things, and I stay on top of what's current in the music industry. Like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching my videos.